So let's get on to part two of the basic drawing commands. Uh, in part one, I've already covered these, these five, six commands. Now let's go on to some more. I even finished the spline and the polygon. Now let's see the construction line command. Now if you see the little picture that you see that pops out, it's basically for making construction lines. So when you're working with your drawing, this shouldn't print when you finally print your drawing. It's just for guidance. It's just for making construction lines. So, so we snap things right. All you have to do is just click the lines. So you go to the construction line, click on the start point, and give it uh, an angle. And hit enter. Go to the construction line, click line, hit enter. Okay, again, the command is right here. You really don't use this that much, but it's up to you. If you want to, you can always uh, use this command, but it's uh, not used a lot. So let's go to the next one. <coughs> now the difference between the ray and the construction line is the ray, uh, is the construction line makes a line going all the way from the start of your screen to the end of your screen till wherever it vanishes, right? It will go pretty much travel around the whole earth and uh, you know still it won't end see it keeps going now when we're working with the ray command it it has a start point but it doesn't have an end point okay so if you see it starts somewhere but it doesn't have an end point and will keep going forever so again how we use the ray really simple go to the draw click on the ray give it a start point and probably a point that doesn't end okay so that's your ray so these are construction lines and that's our ray now it's up to you where you want to use it um, I really don't use it that much same thing goes with the next one which is points now if you want to make some points this probably would be used to uh, in your uh, civil drawings where you want to insert points to wherever you want to right it's as easy as just going and clicking on the tool and then just clicking anywhere on the screen okay uh, I could use the points as a reference to draw my lines on so I'll go there see now I can snap to all the lines that I created and I could finish my shape okay so that was the point command again it's up to you uh, how many times you want to use it I really don't use it that much uh, the next being the gradient command now if you see if you want to put in a, a lake or something and you want to put in some color so that's where you would be using the gradient command but the thing you should know that you use the gradient command it has to be a closed object it cannot be open so if I zoom in here and I'm using a gradient command all I have to do <coughs> select the gradient whichever pattern that I want maybe I'll take this one right now it says pick points or select object I'm gonna pick point so it's easier because I have to pick point in an area that is closed so I pick a point right here it already selects it all I have to do now is hit what I have to hit enter and hit OK now there's my gradient now again you could use this in your drawing if you want to put some color but in AutoCAD drawings you really don't use much gradient so I'll go back to the same command uh, go to the gradient select object this time I'm gonna select object instead of picking a point inside so let's see I click on that object because I know it's closed click pick on this object because it's closed let's see if it does on this one and I hit enter and enter see it worked over here it worked over here but it didn't work over here now why is because it is not closed so I have to make sure it's closed I can even do that by doing this and boom there you go so there you see your gradient in that little pattern okay so that was about the uh, gradient command now we have a few more this one is the boundary command I'm gonna get rid of this uh, in fact I'm gonna go back a few 
steps. Now let's see what a boundary command does. Go to the boundary, create a region or a polyline from an enclosed area. Okay, so all I'm going to do is pick points again, and this area is enclosed. I click inside and I hit enter, and pretty much that was what it, I had to do. There's nothing else. Now, if I go on here, you see now it created a boundary. Before it was, uh, it was like this individual lines, and if I try to move my boundary, see what happens. See, I still see my individual lines, but I have already created a boundary. So that tool is helpful uh, in a lot of times when you are hatching objects, or for instance, you want to do something like this. In this case, uh, you want to have a closed area. So make sure you have a closed area. And if it's a P line, it's always easier hatching a P line um, because, like, let's try this, right? I'm going to do the same exact gradient command back again. I'm gonna pick points so this one works with big points and I hit enter and I hit OK but if I would have tried ha uh, gradient the same thing uh, instead of the pick I take the add objects see I had to click all of these right and then it would work but in this case I had to do is just select the object click on the object because it's one piece and it's closed and I hit enter and enter boom so it did the job so the way the gradient tool works is a lot similar to this one which is the hash tool even though we really don't use much gradient but we use a lot of hash tool especially when we are working with floor plans and sections and stuff like that so let's get to the hash tool uh, now this big panel pops up where it's telling you the same thing where pick points or select the object if it's complete or if it's not in one piece then you have to go there and pick a point inside uh, there are different swatches that are there for the hatch I can always click here now these are the ANSI standards I can go in ISO predefined like for instance I want to put a brick in here so I hit OK all I have to do next is just pick a point or select object it depends what you want pick a point hit enter and all I have to do right now is what hit OK so even though it is uh, hashed, it says unable to hatch for some reason. Let's try another example. I do hatch, H, enter, big points, big inside area, hit enter. I can even hit the preview if I want. You see? So there it goes. Now the reason why it was unable to do the hatch in the small area is because the brick size was really humongous. So I have to make sure that the size is small or change it. Now where do I change the size? I have to go over here in the scale. I can give the scale instead of 1 I'm going to give it as 0.5. So it will be half the size of that. If I wanted to fit it here I would have probably needed even more right? So I would go in 0.1. You see? So I could hatch this if I had that size. Now let's try doing that. I do H for hatch, enter, pick points, I'm going to pick inside, this one, maybe that one, I can do like all of them together, but I have to pick the inside. So would it work over here? No. Why? Because again it's open. So I have selected my uh, points, I click enter, my scale I'm going to put it at point 0.1, I can do preview, you see, see all the bricks in here now and hit enter okay so that's how I would be using the hatch later on I'll go a little bit more detail into hatch but I think right now this is good enough when we do some more assignments we'll be learning more about hatch it's, it's right next to the gradient it's the same thing right the same exact panel but main thing we need to know is uh, the scale of the hatch even the angle of, of the hatch like for instance I can change the angle of this hatch by clicking on it the same window pops up I'm going to use the angle as 45 this time you can hit preview if I wanted but I know it would change it so I, sh I just go click that See? so now we have a hatch pattern going at 45 angle uh, if I double click on it I can see 
the different patterns I can always change it to a solid or uh, maybe I'm gonna use sand right now and hit OK so this should change into sand it's just taking a little time because there's a lot of lines so my computer is a big chance might even crash right now so let's see oh it worked okay but don't do that mistake I'm gonna go control Z control Z takes it back control Z okay now we are there so the more lines you have the more bigger the file size the more complications and the more chances of your computer crashing so you have to be careful when you're using the hatch command especially when you're reducing the scale of your hatch now there are a couple more commands that you could see over here uh, we already saw the boundary and the next one is the region so it converts an object that encloses an area into a region okay so click on that now let's see how this tool works uh, I'm going to select the object I'm selecting that and hit enter so what did it do it made it one piece see that's what it did it made it one piece if I click on it before I use the command let's see if it's still one piece oh it is one piece so I'm gonna draw another one line okay is this one piece no there are so many different lines right I'm gonna use that command let's see how that command works it was called as uh, the region so I click on that select the whole object and hit enter huh it still doesn't do it so I have to look into that command and I'll probably talk about that a little bit later so alright so I just figured it out so basically you see all these lines are single lines I don't know why it didn't work last time so when I use uh, the region command it will make all those into one so I select the object like this hit enter now if you see it's just one piece it's, if I move it it doesn't create a copy it's, it just converted that uh, line into what into a polyline okay so you can work with that it's, it looks pretty handy even though I really don't use it that much but it will convert all the lines that you draw in one go as far as it's closed into a polyline all you have to do is go click on the region make sure go click on the region make sure you are making a selection like that hit enter okay one piece okay that's good now we have a couple more left and we have one minute to go so <clears throat> there's the next one is the revision cloud what the revision cloud does is what you see in your picture right here it basically uh, a revision cloud like if you make the cloud then that means that I need to make changes into that area so the, the next time you open the file or anyone else who opens the file they know that that area or that particular uh, detail has not been worked with or still needs to be finalized so revision cloud is something that tells people hey I'm still working on that it's not done and I can make a revision cloud just by clicking on it and ending where I started so when I open this file I would know that hey this part has not been worked with so uh, I will get to that later on so it's just like a reminder thing now let's go to the donut and this uh, this helix you can try the helix on your own you already know so many tools it even shows you a little picture but the donut you click on it main thing is it's got to have two diameters uh, so it's asking me specify the inside diameter I'm gonna give it as 5 and enter specify the outside diameter I'm gonna give it as uh, 15 and enter See, it made a donut for me all I have to do now is click and click and click click so I hope you understand this tutorial this covers the basic drawing commands that are there and you, you just have to play around with it just to uh, get a hang of it it's nothing tough it's pretty easy so I do have a uh, assignment that I've already done a uh, small little project starting from scratch till the finish so please look into my other videos and uh, give me any comments or suggestions that you have if you have any questions feel free to ask thank you